Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I am Chris Heider and today we are going to talk about joints. <laughs> no, not that kind of joint. This kind of joint. I'm talking wood. On this piece alone, this face frame, we're going to show you five different methods of joining each one of these corners. Five. Stick around. So if you want to be a woodworker, you got to realize there's multiple ways to skin a cat. There's a lot of different ways to join wood. On this piece, we are going to talk about five of them. One is a mortise and tenon over in this corner. Over here, we've got dowels. Down here is biscuits. Over here, pocket holes. And in the center, half lap joints. So five different ways for you to do the same thing, basically. And there's a right time and a wrong time to choose them because they all have a different strength profile, okay? And some of them are more difficult to do. You need specialty tools, things like that. But you know, I've got this friend, Andy Rawls, in Texas. He's got a YouTube channel. The guy is a craftsman. He has a wood shop. The woodwork that he does puts me to shame. But he did a comparison of three of these different joints to see what their strength profile was. Did you know? that a mortise and tenon joint is twice as strong as dowels or a pocket hole joint. Yeah, twice as strong. Take a look. So today we're going to take a look at the mortise and tenon joint, which is really one of the most important joints in any piece of furniture. It's kind of the backbone of furniture. We've got four joints that I've cut. Um, we did this yesterday. I've got a video up showing how we made these. But you can see here we've got a machine cut mortise and tenon, hand cut mortise and tenon, and to make things interesting, I've included uh, a dowel joint and pocket screws, which are kind of common knockoffs of the mortise and tenon or subs, cheap substitutes that you would find in kind of mass produced furniture. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start off with the pocket screws. Oh, this one is gonna be 60. I think it's gonna break, so I'm standing back. There. Yep. And that's it. On to the dowel joint now. This actually has two 3 8 inch thick dowels that are like two inches long each one. So here's another 20 or 60. Now this is where the pocket screws went out. Pounds. Doing the hand cut, mortise and tenon. First 20 pounds, 40 pounds, 60 pounds, 80 pounds of sand. We have 80 pounds in this bucket and now I have 20, so that's a total of 100 pounds hanging. So there's definitely a little bit of failure going on. I can see it pulling away. Alright, so unfortunately this one broke while I was getting more sand, so I did not get it on camera, the failure, but here it is, the aftermath of it. So we're gonna have some fun with this. I'm gonna show you how to do these five joints. This is a real project. I'm not gonna tell you what it is until the very end. We're gonna see if you can guess. Okay, let's get started. Okay, here you can see I've rough cut the size, the initial size of our face frame. There's the two pieces, top and bottom, are called rails. They go horizontal. And then the vertical pieces are called styles. And what we're going to start with is cutting a tenon on the end of the rail. And that's what's going to slide into the mortise in the style. To get started, we're going to make the tenon first. And what I've done is I've drawn lines an inch back from the edge on both sides, and I've cut I've actually marked out this little notch right here. So this is going to be a blind tenon. It's going to fit together into the wood like this. And when the joint is together, you won't know that it's a tenon inside that piece of wood there. Okay, now what I've done is I've taken the tenon and I've marked where the mortise is going to go on the mating piece, the style. And when it's put together, 
it'll slide in like that and you won't even be able to see it. So. Alright, here comes the tricky part. Okay, there you can see what I'm talking about. The slot in the wood is cut. It takes a while, but uh, it is the strongest joint there is. Let's see how this fits together. It's pretty good. I just got a little bit more to go down that one end and uh, should be done. Okay, with the mortise and tenon done on this side, now we're going to turn our attention to the other side and we're going to do dowels here. This is what I would consider the second hardest. That's the hardest, this is the second hardest, in my opinion. These are little dowel pins that we're going to use, but they have to be put through holes. And when you put a hole in one side and you glue the pin in, it almost becomes like a mortise and tenon. So the trouble with these is you have to get it precise in two directions. You have to get the holes to line up perfectly, and you can see I put lines right here, but they also have to line up in this other direction too. So to, to make that happen, we have a, a jig. Okay, I have the jig in place, and it is set on my mark to drill the first hole. I'm not crazy about this jig. It is my first time using it has a little bit of play in it so uh, that's not a good thing when you're talking about getting dowels in perfect position in two dimensions so I'm not crazy about it I would not recommend this one so uh, but I'm gonna use it today and it has I'm using 3 8 inch dowels they fit right in there and I'm using a 3 8 inch brad point bit that came with the kit and a stop collar so that I only go so deep Let's give it a try. And that goes right in like that. With some glue, should be perfect. These are compressed, by the way, so they're very loose in the holes. And I guess that's how they make up for it, is if these are loose and you put a lot of glue on them, they swell up in the hole, so they'll take up whatever slack is in there. Plus, you're going to glue the, the surface as well. So. That's how that works. Now, if you thought that one was easy, wait till you get a hold of this. So this is a biscuit joiner. It's a special tool that cuts a slot in the end of wood, and it puts in these little football-shaped things called biscuits. And like dowels, these are compressed wood as well, and when you add glue to them, they swell up. The good thing about this is, the machine is really easy to use, a lot easier than a, the, uh, the doweling jig that I used a minute ago. But um, it also has play in it from side to side. As long as you get the face of it in the right position, which is what the machine helps you do, everything is fine. You can move it from side to side. So I'll show you how I cut this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them and I'm going to flip them over so that the face is down. Now remember, this is the inside, and this is the bottom. I'm holding the bottom rail up from the floor. You'll see why. This biscuit is going to go in there, okay? And I only need one. It's actually strong enough that I don't have to put in more than one. But that's where um, I'm going to... I make a mark across both pieces. That's where I want it to go. And then I bring my machine over. Of course, it helps to plug it in and I line up that mark. It cuts a slot, and that's what goes in the slot. I have to do the same thing on the other piece. And see how you can slide it from one way to the other so you can get that line exactly where you want it. And the face is perfectly flush. Biscuit joints. Okay, joint number four is a Craig jig. This is a pocket hole jig system. 
and this is a guide that with a drill that goes down and drills at an angle and then they have these special screws which have really big flat heads on them and it's all part of a system that works together so I've used it before and it works great it's set up already for three quarter inch stock you can use many different sizes of, of uh, stock but this is three quarter inch thick so I'm actually ready to go the neat thing about this system is I only have to put pocket holes in the one side and they will attach to the other side with glue so it works really easy I'm going to put the pocket holes in the inside of this piece That's what the pocket holes look like. And a little screw goes down in each one of them. A little bit of glue. And that will make a nice strong joint. Very easily. Alright, before I'm ready to assemble this face frame, I have one more type of joint to introduce you to. And that is going to be for this center style here. That is going to be a half lap joint and what that means is I'm going to remove half the material from both pieces of wood so that it fits together and gives me a good glue surface. Okay after some layout you can see this is where the center style is going to go and this is the material that's going to be removed. I just have to take out 3 eighths of an inch from each one of these.